I'm here with my brother Matt. I had a dream last night. I saw the ocean so fight. My name's Adam. I'm an Australian freediving champion, but because of COVID, I can't compete. So while we're waiting for the world to open up again, me and my wife Erin and our daughter Ellie are going on a freediving road trip around Australia. We're going to be living out of our tent and diving everywhere. So subscribe to follow the journey and a huge thanks to our patrons for making this all possible. Hey freediving, oh, the sun is bright. Hey freediving, hey freediving family, I'm here with my brother Matt. Uh, I've never, never gone diving with my brother Matt before. And I'm going to take him for his first dive today. We're going to also see if we can find some, some lobsters while we're out there because uh, I brought home some lobsters the other day and he was like, where'd you get those from? Where'd you get those from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just going to get straight into it. He's going to go off the, off the beach here, go swim through some caves, look for, look for some lobbies and have fun. Matt, do you like lobster? I do, I do. Where, where are we going to find the lobster? There. How are we going to catch this lobster? With my hands. Oh, right, Matt, show us your mask and snorkel. It's so pretty. <laughs> scuba. I got scuba. That's my brother. <laughs> For so many years, I've wanted to take my little brother Matt diving. Matt is such a physical, athletic person. He grew up playing every sport under the sun, surfing, doing everything. But the sad thing is he can't actually do any of it anymore. You see, when Matt was 18 years old, he went to the army. Straight out of school, he spent about five years as a rifleman in the Australian army. He was deployed to Timor and Afghanistan. But it was after he came back from Afghanistan that uh, he started to notice some issues in his body. Matt's joints, in particular his shoulders, kept dislocating all the time. And he started to have these episodes where he would just faint or, or pass out, or his heart rate would just accelerate through the roof and, and he would get dizzy and fall over. And um, we had no idea what was going on, and neither did any of the doctors at the time. But because Matt's joints kept dislocating, he needed to start getting surgeries done. And so he had shoulder reconstruction after shoulder reconstruction and ankle reconstructions and knee surgeries. And I think Matt is up to his 13th or 14th, uh, you know, reconstruction surgery at the moment. Then he eventually got diagnosed with Erlos Danlos syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder. And it was also why he was having issues with his heart. And so here's my brother at the time, you know, 23, 24, 25 years old, in his absolute prime. Uh, a really athletic, uh, involved, sporty person who all of a sudden can't do anything. It's always made me really sad. And I've always wanted to take him diving because we just had to, you know, make sure we got his, his heart in order. So he has a pacemaker in now and that uh, now he is safe to dive. <laughs> so this is my very first time taking Matt for a, for a dive. And um, I knew he'd be an absolute natural. All the clays uh, like to hide in the cracks in these gullies here. So I uh, would just come along through all these gullies and just like, you know, scope out all the cracks and see, see if we find any craze in there. I had a dream last night. I saw the ocean so fight. The fight of people for their history. I saw the birth of a nation running towards its own extinction. I saw them digging. That's very first slip through. <laughs> right, there's out of my claims and my face underwater because the mask is so loose, keeps coming off, and that the actual strap fell off. Time will last forever. <laughs> Could all the kids be born to suffer? A gloomy. Mr. Dutto, watch your nest. I fear for you to be honest. Will we be staring at the fire? Are you both from a silver glass fire? Mr. Dutto, watch your nest. Oh, hello! Oh, well, 
and the one that we found was just a little bit too small, so we put him back. My feet aren't made for flippers, all right? They're called fins, Matt. And so what was the haul of the day? One abalone. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to feed a family of one. Enough to feed Matt as he has dinner alone tonight in his cold, dark farmhouse. He says, he says, you know what? I didn't like two things about being on the beach. Surfing and being in the water. I hate sand. <laughs> gets everywhere. Hey freediving family, so as soon as Matt, uh, Matt left, I got a message from a friend uh, sending me a drone photo that uh, showed me this, this cool wreck in this beach that we usually go to. So this wreck is usually covered by sand, but we've had some big storms here lately. Isn't that right, Ellie? And, um, and, and it's, it's revealed the wreck. So we're going to go and dive it today. Ellie has the GoPro now. We're going to go and dive it today um, and check out what it's, gonna, what it's like. I reckon it'll be really, really cool. <laughs> Are you filming daddy? Good job! We've arrived! Oh Mitch! You guys are Mitch. Mitch is in his chiropractic attire. Look how professional he looks. <laughs> so, um, oh there we go. Uh, so we just wanted to, just sent the drone up just to locate the wreck. Just so that we're not, you know, swimming around in circles for an hour trying to find it. So I've just found it. Look there, you can see the the outline of it, the shape right there. Yeah. straight to the wreck and then cut across to the wharf and dive back in along the wharf check out what's going on under the wharf That's pretty much it enjoy have fun we are at Catherine Hill Bay which is such a beautiful beach it's I don't know it just feels really historic because it's got the big old wharf that they used to um, uh, I think, I think they used to use like a little train or a little sort of, I don't know, some sort of system to get the coal into the big boats that would go to Sydney and Newcastle. Plus, the diving's meant to be pretty epic, so I'm keen, I'm keen to look at the footage back and see what they see. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. So as we swam off the beach, we fanned out just so that we would, you know, make sure we didn't swim right past the wreck. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. The wreck was sitting in about five meters of water. The water was pretty clear for this area too, and to be honest, I did not expect this wreck to be as huge as it was. I couldn't imagine that this entire thing was usually totally covered by sand. So I can see that they've all sort of congregate. So I can see that they've all sort of um, been sticking to one area. So I reckon that they found the wreck. It's looking pretty promising. I don't think you'll see them from where I am, but I'll, I'll give it a go. They are. So I didn't know anything about this wreck when I actually dove it, but later on I looked it all up and the wreck is called the Shamrock. It was originally made in 1878 and it's an old steam vessel. The wreck sank in 1903, so it's been underwater here for 117 years. A summer breeze on silk and honey is running through the golden doors you know you gotta take the right it's now or never by my side it don't taste it don't be shy nobody changes they just lie take your own face by the 
now we were off to swim around the old coal wharf. Usually wharfs like this attract a whole lot of life and I was pretty keen to just swim around it and, and see what pretty things we could see amongst the pylons. watching guys don't forget to subscribe by pressing this little circular thing down here also check out this video or you might want to check out this video because you might like it too